Okay, this is video 8 on the grade 11 chapter Newton's Laws and we are looking in this video at Newton's third law. So let's go and take a look at the statement of that law on page 39 of our notes. And while we're looking at the statement, let's consider this example down at the bottom here of the man pushing it against the wall. So it says, when object A, and we here we're talking about the the man, for example, when object A exerts a force on object B, object B is going to be the wall. So there's that force in question. We've got a force of the man's hand on the wall. It goes on to say that object B, the wall, exerts an oppositely directed force on A. So while the man is pushing on the wall, B, the wall, is pushing backwards on the man. And he says in his law here that these forces have equal magnitudes. So the, so the size of the force of the hand on the wall is exactly equal to the size of the force of the wall on the, on the hand or on the man. And one can also see by looking at these wor words here, the, f the man exerts a f force on the wall, and then the wall exerts a force on the man. So you should note here that these forces act on different objects. So let's go and look at some examples. Here we've got a foot pressing backwards on the ground. So the foot pushes backwards on the ground. We've got force of foot on ground. And that's an action force. At the same time, simultaneously, he says in his law there, that the ground exerts a forward force on the foot. So that's an action-reaction pair. Let's go over it again. The foot pushes backwards. There's some friction there, so it uh, makes contact with the floor and tries to push the floor backwards, the ground backwards. And at the same time, the ground pushes him forwards and the man moves to the right. Let's look at another example of a Newton's third law action-reaction pair here. We've got the swimmer pushing on the wall so there's an action force and the reaction force to that is that the wall exerts a forward force on the man equal in magnitude but opposite in direction that force would actually be exerted on the foot. So if we had to describe this force here, it would be the force of wall on foot. So notice how we're changing the order of the words. So here in the action force, we've got foot acting on wall. And then to find the reaction force, we simply swap those words around. And here we've got the wall acting on the foot. Again, take note that these forces are acting on different objects. This force acts on the wall. This one acts on the swimmer. If we blew a balloon up and released the end, the elastic part of the balloon would drive the gas out. So there'd be a force acting on the gases, force of balloon on the gas. So there's an action 
force so because this uh, elastic balloon is contracting it's forcing all the gas out the back so there's your action force and if we wanted, wanted to find the reaction force we'd simply swap the order of these words around so here we have a force of the gases on the balloon okay so there's another action reaction p and that's what pushes the balloon forward so if you release a balloon you see a shoot around the room because the because it's exerting a force on the gases backwards and at the same time the gases exert a force on the balloon forwards again acting on different objects this force acts on the balloon this acts on the gases so they can't cancel each other out act on different objects here is another example the wheel of a car turns and as it turns it grips on the road and the rubber of the tire would exert a force backwards on the road so the force of tire on road would be the action force and if we wanted to find the reaction force to that we'd swap these two words around swap the order and we'd say there's a force of the road on the tire equal in magnitude opposite in direction so that would be the reaction force again this force acts on the road but that force acts on the tire they act on different objects and therefore they cannot cancel each other out right let's look at another example we've got a book resting on a table and because the table's in the way the book is going to press down on the table so that would be the force of the book on the table that would be considered to be an action force and then the reaction force to that is the force of the table up on the book. And that would be considered to be a normal force. These two forces have equal magnitudes. They act in opposite directions and they act on different objects. This force is acting on the table this force is acting on the book so these two forces wouldn't be part of the same free body diagram because they act on different objects let's look at gravitational forces so a gravitational force would be the weight of an object so this book experiences a gravitational force towards the earth and if we had to, we know that to be its weight. But if we had to put it into words, we would say it's the force of the earth on the book. Well, if we're going to find the reaction force to that, we need to swap those two words around. And we get the force of the book on the earth. Well, you can see it's not even... Near, well it's not even in contact with the earth but these are gravitational forces so objects do not have to be in contact with each other so here's the force of the earth on the book that would be the weight of the book at the same time the book exerts a force upwards on the earth so that's the reaction the force of the book upwards on the earth and again this one's clear to see that that force on the book acts 
towards the earth and that force on the earth acts towards the book they act on different objects here's the earth down here so we have an action reaction pair let's just look at a common mistake in exams let's take let's go back to this example here and look at a free body diagram for the book The book would experience a gravitational force. That would be the force of the Earth on book. But the book also experiences a normal force from the table. common mistake in exams is for students to think that these two forces are action-reaction pairs. They are not action-reaction pairs because they're both acting on the same object, the book. Action-reaction pairs do not act on the same object. They act on different objects. So you'll never see an action-reaction pair in a free body diagram because a free body diagram is just for one object. Later in our, or earlier in our notes, we came across this example where we had a forward force being applied to, two, to box A, which was resting against box B. And we said in that example that that force is not acting on B, but rather box A pushes on box B. So there's the action force. That's the force of a on B at the same time according to Newton's third law there should be a force that B exerts on A that's an action reaction pair they do not cancel each other out because they're acting on different objects and that was another example of an action-reaction pair in our notes. Let's go back to gravitational forces. So we know that the moon orbits the earth and it does that because it experiences a gravitational force from the earth. So that's the force of the earth on the moon. Well, according to Newton's third law, there should be a reaction force and that should be acting on the earth from the moon so here we have the force of the moon on the earth so gravitational forces are non-contact forces they act over a distance the moon experiences a pull from the earth at the same time the earth experiences an equal force from the moon so although the earth has a bigger mass than the moon according to Newton's third law these two forces are still equal in magnitude so the misconception here is that the the force that the earth exerts on the moon is bigger than the force that the moon exerts on the earth that's wrong these two action reaction pairs are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and they act on different objects let's look at one more example here of a person that's moved forward forwards in their seat and they are now stretching the seat belt so as the chest of the passenger presses on the seat belt we have a force of the man on the seat belt that's an action force to find the reaction force we'd swap those two words around so we get the force of the seat belt on the man equal in magnitude opposite in direction that's the force of the seat belt on the man
Right, so let's just go back to that statement of Newton's third law. And maybe it makes more sense to you now. We've got two objects. We've got object A and we've got object B that are interacting. Object A exerts a force on B. Then B, at the same time, exerts an opposite force on A that's equal in magnitude. 